Hi, this is Scott from Hereticals Rafa. Um, this video blog is just a brief update on where we are with respect to the uploading of, uh, of D2 Force, Rafa's lecture notes on the advanced theory of value. Um, the lectures are out. Uh, you can click on the link under this video um, uh, to, to find them. Also uh, at www.srafaarchive.org uh, um, and the Heretical Srafa website. You just Google search Heretical Srafa and you should find the website um, and also D24. Um, I think it's it's highly significant, and I want to mark this occasion here. It's highly significant that we have, with the uploading of Srafa's lecture notes and the transcriptions, um, Srafa's unfettered voice, uninterpreted voice, for the first time since 1960. Um, this is a significant event, and it's in in the nick of time, right? I, I I think that what's happening with respect to the world, in the world economy, and the way in which we understand global po po political economic phenomena has completely changed. I mean, we have a new president here in this country um, who is uh, his moniker is the disruptor in chief. I think there's a lot to be said about that. There certainly is a lot of consternation with respect to the chaos that we are now expecting for the next four years. I mean, what you had with the election we're going to probably have on a daily basis for the next few years. And so that's causing a lot of uh, people, not only consternation, I think the positive thing is it causing people to actually organize. And that's important. And, and But as we saw from the Occupy movement, we have to have something to organize rather than just anger and and, and just wanting to, you know, uh, yell and, and, and make a voice. I mean, that's really important, but there has to be some type of cogent manner in which we can advance not only a critique of the present system, but also advance a a viable and sustainable alternative for the future. And fortunately, we have Srafa coming out right in the nick of time, in my opinion, in order to do that. And so not only the lecture notes on the advanced theory of value, but all the Srafa's archives are going to be coming out, and we're going to be uh, subjecting to all of that the same level of rigor, transcription, uh, hyperlinking to, uh, to references, etc., as we're doing in, T2, in D24. This is an important point to, to, to make because I'm of the opinion that Srafa's inquiries are not a subfield of economic thought or a subfield of economic theories, heterodox, orthodox, whatever. I, I don't, I, that we can ghettoize and compartmentalize into our little pros. We're the Srafians, you're the institutionalists, you're the post Keynesians, you're the Marxists, you're the neoclassicals, you're the Austrians, I, I, you know, or the feminists, or whatever. I think that all that, of course, all those are relevant ways in which we can understand the economy, uh, economic, economics, economic theory, economic uh, uh, reality, etc. But I think that Srafa's inquiries are much more fundamental. It, what, what Professor Passanetti says in his 1988 uh, entry, um, in, Srafa on Income Distribution in the Cambridge Journal of Economics, Professor Passanetti refers to Srafa's inquiries as foundational. And I, I accept that, that approach, that what we have here is a foundational change with respect to how we are going to reorient the nature of economic inquiry. Now that's important because uh, uh, I, I think that uh, by, by focusing the attention, saying what Srafa is actually speaking to the efficacy of economics as a science itself, redirects and refocuses how we need to, um, at least in my opinion, how we need to, uh, how we need to advance Srafa's inquiries, because it's, it's not something that's just a matter of my opinion. There was, a, um, there was a session in January of 2015 at the ASSA, the Allied Social Science Association, which is the National Conference of Economists, the American Economic Association has its conference there every January, the January of every year. In 2015, it was held in Boston, and there was a panel session in which Greg Mankiw from Harvard uh, critiqued the work of, and, and also David Auerbach, uh, 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 Alan Auerbach of Brown and David Weil of Berkeley, all three critiqued uh, the work of Thomas Piketty in his, uh, in his i.e. Piketty's uh, a, a discourse and disquisition on, um, on income inequality, capital in the 21st century generally, the ideas that were behind that. And to a man, and I especially focused on Man Q, each of those, and Piketty was the discussant at this session, and there's about 200 people in the room, right? And to a man, each one of them, Mankiw, Auerbach, and Brown, critiqued Piketty's approach using one variant or another of the marginal productivity of capital. 
Well, I listened to this, and I was in the back, and I stood up at the end, and I asked, addressed the Professor Mankiw. I said, Professor Mankiw, how is it that you can use an approach, namely the marginal productivity of capital, to criticize this man, i.e. Piketty's work? How are you using a concept that itself is known to be fraught with error, given the Cambridge capital controversies? We know that it's got heuristic problems, empirical problems, logical problems, whatever. You're using this flawed concept as if it's gravity, right? And you just the way you just kind of said it in order to criticize this man's work. He said there publicly uh, that I will not answer a question on the Cambridge Capital controversies. And subsequently, I had an email exchange with him, and and he continued with that recalcitrant line. And he said because I wanted him to meet me and let's have an open discussion. This was an open question in a public forum, and I wanted him to address the um, the the question that I had. And I, in a public manner, I, I have no interest to have personal exchanges with him. I want him to publicly defend marginal productivity of capital because he publicly used it to attack Piketty's work, and and uh, and he refused, and 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 he continued to refuse in in, in the email exchange. And um, I'll blog about this at some point, but uh, but but I, I in that exchange, I ended basically saying, you know, due respect, Professor Mankiw, uh, science is not a multiple choice endeavor, and we can't pick and choose what we want to uh, want to do. Want to use uh, 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 if it's in, if if it's inconvenient for us, or if it's convenient for us, that he has to address that. This is what's happening, and this is what we need to, in my opinion, we need to understand in in moving Strapa's analysis forward. So that that's the nature of where we're at, and it, and we're at an interesting historical juncture. Um, and I think that it's very highly appropriate to recognize that Sraffa's archival material, Sraffa's voice, uh, is now is now going to come out unfettered during these times, so that all of us can think about it in 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 a coherent in a coherent manner. Right. I just want to uh, quickly talk about updating the nature of the um, of of the blog. It, I mean, of the uh, presentation itself. Um, what I'm doing now, and I've done this for the first 17 or 18 pages of the lecture notes, is we are hyperlinking uh, the, 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 the transcribed text with um, using original sources. We're able to uh, hyperlink the, to the original sources. Srapa is, is writing it. We're going to hyperlink it using three reputable sources. Uh, the first is going to be the History of Economic Thought website, and the latter, and which has a really, I mean, that's a wonderful website. It was developed by Consolo Fonseca and Leanne Usher in the 1990s at the New School. Back in the day, I was, I was at New School at the time, and I remember when and that was coming out. It's well known all over the world. It's one of the best used websites all over the world. It's wonderful. We're going to be hyperlinking all of the um, all of the uh, 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 individuals who are named. Mostly, it's, it's, this is all going to be non-interpretational. By the way, Trinity 2.0 arrangement is a non-interpretational approach to this. So we're going to be hyperlinking the individuals with some biographies from the HET web history of thought website. From the uh, uh, but we're going to uh, 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 they all. Also have the original text, etc. We're also going to be using other sites as well. I, I want to be clear about that. There are two sites specific, specifically. One is the, Liber the Library of Economics and Liberty, and the other is the Online Library of Liberty. Now, these are two free market-oriented websites, which is which is fine. I mean, we want this to be completely open, and we want this to be as scientific as possible. We want to take relevant material and relevant uh, 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 theoretical uh, uh, endeavors and theoretical approaches from all sides of the economic theory. That's what Srafa did. That's definitely what Srafa did, and we're going to reproduce that. I think that's important for us to know that. Um, what I like about the two uh, uh, Liberty online libraries is they also have uh, biographies of the authors, and we're going to also hyperlink that. I mean, Srafa mentions the names often, so we're going to intersperse. One hyperlink will be the HET website. Another is going to be one of these Liberty Library websites to give a balanced approach, you know, truly balanced approach to the phenomena. Again, I, I think that one of the things that I know, I know I don't know it all. I know I haven't figured it all out. And I know I'm not smart enough to figure it out by myself. And I think that if all of us were to take more of a I say a humble approach, quite frankly, and, and and try to look at let's try to understand how economics as a science actually uh, expresses itself. That's important. And I'm also going to be using some of the 
Marxist websites, and especially the uh, Marxist.org, and looking at the original material of Marx himself. And I have the two, th these two sources here. You, you have from the, uh, the Online Liberty uh, website, you have uh, the works of Bumbaver, Capital and Interest. This is the edition that Sraffa read, the smart edition, that is not only up there in terms of, uh, in terms of references, they have online HTML-friendly hyperlinks that we are able to use in developing the relations and developing the material that Sraffa himself was looking for, and so too Marx and Engels in the collected works. And so we're going to be taking both of these, and we're going to be looking at the scientific merit and relevance of both approaches in order to understand how it is we can develop economics even uh, uh, e e even more. And 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 on that, I I don't I do want to make this so look for it. Okay, I've got the first as of now, the 26th of January at 8:25 a.m. Central Time in the United States. I got the first 18 pages, which is the first portion of the history of thought of Sraffa's book. And now we're moving into the latter part, and I'm going to be getting into that um, in into that this weekend. But I, what I'd like to do is is I'd like to since this theme is is on the um, is on the idea that Sraffa has his voice now again for the first time since 1960. We're going to be linking everything together with respect to Sraffa's archival material. One of the things I do want to say um, is that uh, the Online Liberty Library has the complete uh, works and correspondence of David Ricardo online. It's wonderful. All of Sraffa's, and Sraffa, of course, edited this with the collaboration of Marie Staub. All of Sraffa's commentaries are on there. The entire book is HTML friendly. We're going to be moving and, and working through that, I do want to say that the Trinity 2.0 arrangement of Sraffa's archival material takes as its cue the manner in which Sraffa developed his Ricardo. And, and, I, and on my blog, uh, the heretical Sraffa uh, blog, you'll see that there's a blog post that has all the different um, commentary that Sraffa did for the uh, works and correspondence from Ricardo hyperlinks so that people can read for themselves how Sraffa dealt with Ricardo. I'm of the opinion that really there's only one section, and that's section four of Principles uh, One, the, the Sraffa's famous introduction, which is interpretational. Sraffa's interpretation of the Corn Model, but but and, and maybe a little bit in uh, in essay on profits, which takes from that whole Corn Model approach, and which is in uh, volume four of the Works and Correspondence. In in those, there might be a little bit of interpretation. Well, certainly in, in volume in volume one in the introduction, there's interpretation, but the remainder, excuse me, the remainder of the the, um, of the uh, of the notes and correspondence of Ricardo, all the Sraffa's commentaries are informational. Okay, and I think that's that's highly significant. And and the way in which we plan on doing our Sraffa archive is the way in which Sraffa did his Ricardo. And we're going to take that as a cue. And and so that's hopefully you know we we can only aspire to have the level of rigor and scholarship that uh, Mr. Sraffa uh, uh, gave us. Now on this idea of uh, we're at a juncture in history. I believe that. I think we're at a cusp of history, at the arc of history right now, at this juncture, and I think it's highly significant that Sraffa's archival material are released now. And I think that we should make the most we can out of that to study, to understand, and to advance a critique in the 18th and 19th century sense of not only a negative criticism, but also a positive way forward out of this particular quagmire. And on that, I'm going to introduce a, a, an archive Piece, a piece of archive. This, this comes from 1957 January. Sraffa writes this. It's called Just Enough to Hand It Over Before Going Down. I don't know if everybody can see that. I, this is going to be uploaded onto the... Um, the, the, D2, the D312 section. Uh, I have all of D312 on my own, um, uh, on my own images, but this comes from D31258, section two. Sraffa wrote this in January of 1957, and it was here after, Jan after this writing here, and Sraffa did a lot of work in January, December and January of the years in which he was productive. It was in this particular event after this, he said, okay, I'm ready now to pull my book together. I'm ready to put production of commodities out. And for the next three years, he was feverishly working on putting this out in order to hand it off to us now. 
That's the key. He's handing it over to us. We need to take that baton and we need to run with it now more than ever, okay? So read your Shrafa. I'm going to put up more stuff. We're going to hyperlink it here. If there's any errors, if there's any problems, please email me about it. If anybody wishes to do any transcriptions, let me know in advance so that we, we produce what other people are doing here. And we're on, guys. Shrafa's out. We need his voice and his voice is coming, okay? Take it easy. I'll see you later, okay? Oh, the next one we're coming out is D191. After I get D24 done, we're going to put out D191, which are Shrafa's black notebooks, which are written in April to March, April to May of 1943. Deals with a lot of Bombavik and Borkiewicz and, and Austrian theory. Shrafa and Borkiewicz, Gerke and Kurtz, uh, they write a 2006 uh, uh, article in History of, Eco History of Political Economy and Hope. Check it out, and, and I'll put that online hopefully in the next week or so, okay? Take care. Peace.